Hey everybody, how's it going? Daryl here. Thank you for joining me as I gig in Smoot, Wyoming. I had the opportunity to DJ for the wedding of Cody and Dana in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming. Their family had a huge piece of property that made for a gorgeous wedding venue. It's about four hours away from my house, so close enough to drive to with my own gear, but I wanted to pack light. I wanted to be able to travel without my trailer. It's a big ceremony with 150 plus people, so I'm bringing a bigger ceremony setup aka two battery powered speakers and I don't want to be bringing too much lighting equipment. The reception is taking place in a big white tent and I want to provide up lighting for the entire tent as well as some lighting for the dance floor. The lighting won't mean much until later in the evening but we'll be here till midnight so lighting will play a huge impact on the dance floor for about three to four hours. I get the coveted spot of being right next to the dance floor. I'm going to use Evol 50 since there will be less than 200 people in attendance and even fewer people dancing at any given time. So I will uplight each of these tent poles which ends up being about 30 uplights. I'm using my both IR4 uplights which are super compact so bringing 30 of them is really easy. The fact that they're wireless and battery operated makes them so convenient to deploy and use. So I set them up around 2 p.m. and I want them to last till midnight. So I'm going to keep them connected through DMX, but have them blacked out until it starts to get dark. I'm bringing my both 360 pixel tubes and mounting them on microphone stands with a quarter inch adapter. My totems take up most of the room in my car when I'm packing, so I'm ditching them today in favor of gravity stands. And besides, the 360 pixel tubes are basically an upgraded, slimmer version of a glow totem. These gravity stands work perfectly for mounting my 12 pound Chauvet Intimidator spots. In fact, my Intimidator spots are the only light in my rig that aren't battery operated and don't have built-in wireless DMX. So I'm going to use some Donner battery dongles to send a wireless signal to them. This seriously has me considering getting some battery operated movers. I'm using SoundSwitch to control my lighting tonight. I just really love the plug and play workflow so I can just worry about like the DJing and the crowd and living in the moment instead of pushing a lot of buttons for all the important parts. But I do have a couple of static scenes that I'll be using for the formalities. When it starts to get dark and that are still doing like speeches or it's dinner or something, I have a static scene where all the uplights in the room are a warm white color. And then when it's time for the first dance and the other specialty dances, I have my spotlights shining on the center of the dance floor. So here we go. Here's some clips from the dancing.
Overall, it was a really fun wedding. I think that it really killed the vibe and dampened my spirits a little bit because we're in the middle of nowhere, we're completely off the grid, and I'm relying on the generator that they provided me. I offered to provide my own generator for an additional fee, but they had one, so I used theirs. And it struggled, it kept tripping, we kept losing power, we tried taking things off of it, we tried taking off the, the chandeliers above the dance floor, I tried unplugging some things, and it got to the point where I had like one Evolve 50 at 50% power and one of my battery operated ceremony speakers playing, and that was about all the generator could handle. I mean, it was like a 6,000 watt generator, and I've used the generator like that to power like four ETX subs and four tops, pushing a lot more power, pushing a lot more air, and it was able to handle it. But for some reason, it was not able to. This time, there were a really easygoing crowd, so they didn't give me too much of a hard time about it. I suppose in the future, I if it's off-grid, I could insist that I use my own generator that's been tried and trued. But it was pretty difficult because every time the generator tripped, I would have to restart Virtual DJ because it would lose connection with my controller. And I'd have to restart Sound Switch as well. So by the end of the night, I just didn't have Sound Switch connected to Virtual DJ. I just kind of had it in standalone mode is what it's called. And I just mixed with my laptop. I just didn't use a controller. It was just more effort than it was worth having to restart all the programs, restarting the computer. I did have like my battery powered speaker and an iPad, so there never were like very many moments of silence. And I really am grateful for the battery powered lighting. It just made it awesome because no one was standing in complete darkness because we turned off like the tent lights to try to conserve power. So yeah, it was, it was great. The lighting did awesome. I'm really happy with it. And there was loads of battery even after it. So thank you so much for watching this gig log. I tried to do something a little bit different, but I'm hopefully able to give you content that is useful for you guys at your gig. So please smash like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.